In this edition of Back in History, we bring to you a documentary on the life and times of Patrice Lumumba, a Congolese politician, independence leader, and first prime minister of the then Republic of the Congo, a country in Africa now known and called the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Patrice was loved by many of his people, owing particularly to the role he played towards the securing of independence from colonial forces. He commenced his administration on a smooth note, but in no time, a coup was plotted against him. He was arrested and later killed. His body was buried in a shallow grave, but later dug up and destroyed with acid. In 2022, Belgium formally apologized for its role in the execution of Lumumba. Lumumba's story is that of a young vibrant African who did his best to secure independence for his country and then rose to power only to be eliminated at his prime. Welcome to this edition of Back in History. Patrice Lumumba was born on 2nd July 1925. He was born in the Katakokombe region of the Kasai province of the then Belgian Congo. He attended mission-run schools in the Congo. Lumumba was seen by many as an intelligent person. He was a leader in several circles and held strong views on Pan-Africanism and worked assiduously in seeing to an end to colonialism in Africa. In no time, Lumumba had a large following due to his personal charisma, excellent oratory, and ideological sophistication. He took special interest in the Enlightenment ideas of revolutionists like Jean Jacques Rousseau and Victor Hugo. He wrote extensively, and most of his works had anti imperialist themes. He continuously worked for national goals and independence from colonial forces. In 1960, Lumumba attended a round table conference in Brussels with other citizens of his country and top on the agenda at the said conference was the grant of independence to Congo. The discussions were successful and Congo was granted independence by Belgium and on 30th June 1960, the independence of the Congo was formally celebrated and was well attended by Congolese independence advocates, the people of Congo in general, King Baudouin of Belgium, and a large segment of the foreign press. At the ceremony, the king praised the development strides of the colonial power in the Congo. He ended his speech with an admonition to the new leaders of the Congo in the following words, quote, Do not compromise the future with hasty reforms and do not replace the structures that Belgium has handed over to you until you are sure you can do better. Do not be afraid to come to us. We will remain by your side and give you every needed advice. End of quote. The king then resumed his seat and was appreciated by the new president of the country President Joseph Kasavubu. There and then, Lumumba, the Prime Minister, made an impromptu speech and reminded the audience that the independence of Congo had not come to them magnanimously by Belgium as they are made to believe. He delivered a speech that Belgium took personal and did not forgive him for the rest of his life. Part of the speech went as follows, unquote. For this independence of the Congo, although being proclaimed today by agreement with the Belgium, an amicable country, with which we are on equal terms, no Congolese worthy of the name will ever be able to forget that it was by fighting that it has been won, a day-to-day fight an ardent and idealistic fight, a fight in which we were spared neither privation 
no suffering, and for which we gave our strength and our blood. We are proud of this struggle, struggle of tears, of fire, and of blood to the depths of our being. For it was a noble and just struggle and indispensable to put an end to the humiliating slavery which was imposed upon us by force. End of quote. This speech did not go down well with the King of Belgium, who was right there in the Independence Hall with his entourage and a flurry of press men and women. The journalists in attendance were shocked at such audacity from Patrice Lumumba. Lumumba was roundly criticized by the media, and the Time magazine, for instance, described his speech as, quote, venomous attack. Analysts are of the view that this speech was the beginning of the journey of hate that would eventually consume the life of Patrice Lumumba. The Independence Day celebration was over, and although three days of public holidays was declared, Patrice Lumumba went straight to work as the first Prime Minister of the new country. His office was full of activities, day in, day out. Lumumba was more of a workaholic who placed the interests of Congo at the forefront of activities as Prime Minister. Patrice was indeed a Pan-Africanist and lover of his home country, Congo, and of Africa. Not quite long after the grant of independence to Congo, the country began to face some internal crises, especially with the rank and file in its military, most of whom had thought that the grant of independence would bring promotion in ranks and material wealth to them. The country began to experience mutinies in military barracks and a couple of other places within the country. The country seemed overrun by gangs of disgruntled soldiers. In his book titled Chief of Station Congo, published in 2007, Larry Delflin notes that the mutiny by soldiers became serious and several Europeans who lived in the Congo began to flee the country." Unquote. In response to this increasingly dangerous situation, Prime Minister Lumumba went on national radio and announced as follows, quote, Thoroughgoing reforms are planned in all sectors of the nation by my government. My government will make every possible effort to see that our country has a different phase in a few months, in a few weeks." End of quote. Despite this assurance, the mutinies continued. But following the personal intervention of Lumumba and President Joseph Kasavubu, the mutinies were suspended. Not long after this, the mutiny by soldiers continued and spread further. Several persons were ambushed and killed including European army officers who were still in the country as military advisors. Belgium had to intervene by sending as much as 6,000 troops to protect its nationals. In that process, there were clashes which led to the murder of Congolese citizens. The Belgian intervention thus aggravated the situation and made it even worse. A United Nations resolution, resolution number 143, was passed in New York calling for the immediate removal of Belgian forces from Congo. The UN then sent troops to the Congo to put an end to the unrest. Despite this intervention, the unrest did not end. Lumumba was unhappy with the Belgium. And on July 14, 1960, he broke diplomatic ties and relations with them. He insisted that the Belgium forces should vacate the Congo. In response, the Belgian government described Lumumba as, quote, communist, anti-white, 
an anti-Western. End of quote. At this time, the mineral-rich Katanga region of the Congo had been taken over by dissident forces with the support of the Belgian forces. It was run like an independent country and this was an issue of serious concern to Patrice Lumumba and his government. Lumumba then traveled to the United States of America to meet with the UN and also traveled to Canada to seek for support. He also met with the US officials in Washington. He solicited for support, financial and technical, to enable him fight and free Katanga from Belgian forces and from dissident Congolese soldiers. Katanga is part of Congo with rich mineral deposits and Lumumbashi, the mining capital of the Congo, is in the Katanga province. Lumumba desperately needed the liberation of Katanga from imperial forces and therefore traveled to many countries in the West for assistance. But to his surprise, he did not receive the needed cooperation of the West. He was rather assured that whatever assistance that would be offered would be offered through the United Nations. Deeply frustrated, Lumumba reached out to the Soviet Union and met with his ambassador and discussed the donation of military equipment. This approach did not go down well with the United States of America and other countries in the West. Lumumba then traveled back to Africa and visited several countries in need of support. He went to Ghana, Liberia, Tunisia, Morocco, Guinea, and Togo. Some of these African countries pledged to give him support, while others pledged to send their support through the United Nations to resolve the Katanga crisis. Lumumba then returned to the Congo. On August 9, 1960, Lumumba declared a state of emergency throughout the whole of the Congo. He subsequently issued several orders in his bid to return normalcy to the country. Yet, the situation did not abate. Lumumba thus became a prime minister with so much to contend with and with no clear direction on how best to navigate the situation. At this point, Lumumba was only 10 weeks in office. Lumumba threatened to seek help from the Soviet Union if the situation did not abet. The situation did not abet and there was palpable fear that a coup might be staged in the country. On September 5, 1960, the president, Joseph Kassavubu, went to national radio and announced the dismissal of Lumumba and six of his ministers from the government. Upon hearing the broadcast, Lumumba also went to radio and denounced the dismissal and described it as illegitimate and unacceptable. Lumumba then went to parliament and tabled the issue before them. In the end, he secured a vote of confidence to continue in office. His differences with the president, Kasavubu, were also settled. While the dust was yet to really settle in the country, a coup took place in the Congo. On September 14, Colonel Mobutu Seseko announced over the radio that he was launching, quote, a peaceful revolution to end the political impasse in the country. He stated that from henceforth, the military and Congolese graduates would govern the country while the politicians sought out their differences. The situation did not improve. Lumumba still held out himself as the man in power and remained in his official residence 
he did not vacate the official residence. He also made efforts to have a conversation with Mobutu, who was his friend of many years, all to no avail. In November of the said year, Lumumba was arrested by forces loyal to Mobutu. The Soviet Union accused the First World as sponsoring the arrest of Lumumba and called for his immediate release and his immediate restoration as Prime Minister of Congo. This intervention by the Soviet Union did not help the situation. On December 3, 1960, Lumumba was sent to the Thaisville military barracks, Camp Hadi, where he was detained and poorly fed on Mobutu's orders. On 17 January 1961, Lumumba was flown to Elizabethville, where he was brutally beaten and tortured by Katanga officers. He was beaten together with two of his associates who were arrested with him. Later that night, Lumumba was driven to an isolated spot together with his associates. They were lined up against a tree and shot one at a time. Their bodies were immediately buried in a shallow grave. The following morning, the then commissioner of police, afraid of the creation of a burial site and a place of pilgrimage for lovers of Lumumba, ordered that the bodies be exhumed and dismembered. The dismembered bodies were soaked in sulfuric acid and dissolved beyond recognition. The news of Lumumba's death was greeted with protest on several streets in many European countries. The assassination was seriously condemned. Many persons suspected Belgium as being complicit in the death of Lumumba. Others accused the U.S. It has been reported, for instance, that the execution and exhumation of Lumumba's body was supervised by the Belgian Commissioner for Police, Gerard Soet. In an interview with Gerard Soet, granted in 1999 on a Belgian television, Gerard displayed two teeth that he claimed he had served from Lumumba's body. This was a shocker to the world. In 2016, Belgian forces recovered one of the teeth from Gerard's daughter. At that time, her father Gerard, who had preserved the tooth for decades, had passed on. In June 2020, Lumumba's daughter, Julian Lumumba, wrote a letter to Philippe, King of the Belgians, and appealed for, quote, the return of the relics of Patrice Emery Lumumba to the ground of his ancestors, end of quote. She described her father in the said letter as, quote, a hero without a grave. She queried, quote, why after his terrible murder, her father remains condemned to remain a wandering soul without a grave? to shelter his eternal rest." End of quote. On 10 September of the said year, 2020, a Belgian judge ruled that Lumumba's remains, which then consisted of his tooth, must be returned to his family. In May 2021, the Congolese president, Felix Shesikedi, announced that plans have been concluded with Belgium for the repatriation of the last remains of Lumumba. In June 2022, the remains of Patrice Lumumba was officially handed over to his children during a ceremony at Egmont Palace in Brussels, Belgium, by the country's federal prosecutor. The Prime Minister of Belgium, De Croo, apologized on behalf of the Belgian government for the government's role in the assassination of Patrice Lumumba. He stated thus, unquote, For my part, 
I would like to apologize here, in the presence of his family, for the way in which the Belgian government influenced the decision to end the life of the country's first prime minister. End of quote. Lumumba's only remaining tooth was then put in a full-sized casket draped in the Congolese national flag for African diaspora of Belgium to pay their last respects. Lumumba's body was then flown back to his country of birth, the Congo, where his remains were interred in Kinshasa on Thursday 23rd June 2000. And 22. Despite his short reign as Prime Minister for only 10 weeks, Patrice Lumumba was seen as an iconic figure, a true patriot, a nationalist, and a passionate lover of his people. He was uncompromising and was loved by many across the globe. His downfall was viewed as highly detrimental to the wave of African nationalist movement at the time. Lumumba was indeed caught in the midst of centrifugal forces at home and abroad, all of whom worked together to bring his rule to an end and to finally bring his life to an end. In 1972, Thomas Kanza a friend and colleague of Lumumba wrote the following about him, unquote. Despite his brief political career and tragic death, Lumumba entered history through the front door. He became both a flag and a symbol. He lived as a free man and as an independent thinker. He represented for the Congo what Castro meant for Cuba, what NASA meant for Egypt, Nkrumah for Ghana, Moa Satong for China, and Lenin for Russia. End of quote. The memory of Prime Minister Patrice Lumumba shall remain in the heart of men in Congo and across the world for many more years to come. Many thanks for watching this edition of Back in History and do remember to subscribe to the channel and follow the page for regular notifications.